Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. So we've taken a look at a lot of guitars together on the channel, but today something arrived that is unlike anything else I've ever tried in so many ways. So I thought it'd be fun to unbox it, see it for the first time together. The way people have described this to me, I'm excited and a little bit nervous. Let's take a closer look. Oh wow, this is crazy. I mean, look at this medieval font they've used. And this guitar is also crazy. Or escaped missing puzzle piece, <laughs> however you want to look at it. So this is a Strandberg. It's the first time I've had one of these on the channel. Look at this thing, it's so aggressive. It's something Batman would play. Christian Bale's Batman, not Adam West. Nice gig bag too. Pretty rigid padding and faux leather. A little Swedish flag and this reflective material so people can see you carrying around in the dark. Huh. What kind of case candy is this? Oh, that's kind of cool. Eco-friendly earplugs made of ocean plastics. Never seen anything like this included with a guitar before. Huh, awesome. Now, I don't really play headless guitars, but Strandbergs are particularly interesting because look at this neck. What the hell is going on here? This is so bizarre. Okay, so Strandbergs are obviously a big departure from the original established designs from the 50s and 60s and in general, they are not cheap. I remember being curious about them, about the ergonomic designs, about the trapezoid neck shape and the puzzle piece shapes were crazy, but a couple grand is a lot to drop on something just to satisfy curiosity. And so the Bowden Essential is their attempt at a distillation of the key elements that make Strandberg guitars awesome into a more affordable gateway drug into the world of headless ergonomic guitars. Cool. But what does that actually mean in practice though? The guitar comes in three satin finishes, Astro Dust, Elemental Blue, and this Black Granite. For specs, we have a Maranti body, similar to Mahogany, in that distinctive Strandberg Bowden shape with all those cutouts for ergonomics and comfort, and a sculpted neck heel. Bolt-on roasted maple neck with that crazy characteristically Strandberg Endure neck profile, and a very flat 20-inch radius rosewood fingerboard with 24 jumbo stainless steel frets. Glow in the dark lumen like dots for both the side markers and offset fingerboard inlays. That's dope as hell. Strandberg have never been shy about fret experimentation. They introduced the first production guitar with true temperament frets. I can't think of anyone else that even has a squiggly fret production model. And by default, most Strandbergs are multi-scale, where the first fret is almost straight, then they get progressively more angled to conform to your hand's natural position as you go up the neck. It makes sense, but it looks weird, puts a lot of people off because in combination with everything else, it's such a huge departure from a Les Paul or a Tele. Progressively angled frets takes more time and is therefore more expensive to do. So for the essential, we've got a standard 25 and a half inch scale length. It's familiar to more players, it keeps the price tag down. Then it's got Strandberg's custom voice pickups with a five way for split tones, same as you find in the more expensive offerings. So all the essential Strandberg DNA and therefore in theory, the core high end playing experience is here for about half the price of a normal Bowden. That's crazy. That's how you make a gateway drug model. So all that sounds great. It's still just an insane guitar though. This is gonna be a real fun one. And I found the best way personally to really test the guitar is to write something with it, get familiar with it by playing around, see what kind of riffs it inspires. So thanks Strandberg for sending this guitar over for us to check out together. Let's plug it in, get some tones, get some first impressions and write a demo track. I've played headless guitars before. I've demoed a couple on the channel, but like I'm still so out of my element. Where's the carve top? Where's the breakable headstock. It feels like there should be more guitar every time. The action's kind of high right now. I think they've done that for shipping. So here's our first challenge. Oh, that's amazing. These are the tools that came in the case. Yeah, this is just a straight t wrench handle, man. 20 minutes later. I am amazed Strandberg reached out to me on this. They know my taste is stuck in like the moon landing era, right? Maybe that was the point. How does a grandpa guitar guy handle the power of the future? Either way, this is gonna turn out real interesting. I'm currently plugged into the Rev Generator 120 Mark III, super modern amp for a super modern guitar. And that's running directly into a kick-ass audio custom IR based on one of my favorite 412s. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, yeah, it chugs. Off to a good start. This neck is fucking wild, man. I have to say, though, I thought it was going to be... I mean, it is weird. Don't get me wrong. But I thought it was going to be way weirder. Because it's a trapezoid shape, right? There are straight-up rounded edges 
on the back of his neck. So when you look at it, you're like, that's f***ed. How can that possibly work? And I've seen the back of the neck before, but I didn't realize this until I've actually played it. It's asymmetric. So on the lower frets, you've got more of a slope on the treble side and less on the bass side. And then as you travel up the frets, you've got more of a slope on the bass side and a sharper angle on the treble side. And that's really cool because when you're down here and you're doing your cowboy chords and stuff, there's a nice shelf to rest your thumb. Whereas when you get up here and you're doing your widdly widdlies, the neck almost acts as an extension of the body cutaway. So you get better upper fret access and your thumb's resting, I mean, basically right up to the fingerboard. So yeah, I'm still adjusting to it but it's clever and it's definitely less weird feeling than I thought it would be. That's the verdict, weird but acceptable. Just end the video there. Nah, are you kidding? We have to write something with this. Weird is great for creativity. So obviously this is begging for something super modern. And a key to a lot of the modern music that I listen to at least is that instead of being a really digestible four bars, the riffs are eight bars at least. It's kind of proggy in that way. It can take you on a little bit of a journey, a little bit of a day trip before it repeats. <laughs> Okay, uh, we have notes. <laughs> Fantastic start, okay. There's something here, I'm gonna find it. Two hours later. And with the power of editing magic, I found it. Ah, oh, that's a sick first half of a riff, so bouncy. Eventually. Yeah. Fuck me, what have I done? This is a tongue twister. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not that I suck. I'm just getting used to the guitar. Ah, that's such a cool bouncy groove. I'll get there. I just need to level up my Strandberg proficiency stat. I have to say, maybe it's because they didn't have, you know, as much guitar to worry about, but they really... Oh, this is such a stupid joke now that I'm saying it out loud. But what I was going for is that Strandberg was able to have more concentrated focus on the parts that are here. I mean, in a time where even guitars over a thousand bucks are coming with rosewood alternatives, and I have no problem with those, but this is a nice, healthy piece of real rosewood. Fingerboard edges aren't super rolled. The edges have been lightly smoothed over for comfort, which I guess since the fingerboard is such a flat 20 inch radius makes sense. But the stainless steel fretwork, you know, the ends are perfectly flush with the fingerboard. Okay, next riff. Uh, we had big and bouncy, lol, uh, let's play with octaves. Like that. Maybe, since we just adjusted the neck, we should tune, huh? I mean, this is the same mechanism to tune other headless guitars that have played in the past, and the other ones didn't have bad hardware, these are just a lot smoother. In modern metal riffs, there's also a lot of, uh, suspended notes? Is that the right term? <laughs> I don't know, man. Notes be ringing. One eternity later. Again, power of editing magic. Here's uh, what I just came up with instantly. <laughs> oh my god, what am I doing to myself? Man, f Future Hunter, that guy's in for a fun time. Speaking of which, it seems that 22,032% of viewers have not subscribed for a fun time. So here's a quick reminder to do that if you're enjoying the content. We're trying to hit 200,000 subscribers. That helps out the channel, really appreciate that. It'd be a shame to use those notes only once though, because they're kind of haunting. Maybe we can work them into a spooky clean section. Like that. Cool. That little mini buildup will take us nicely into a breakdown. Something I think is really cool is to do like a call and response within the riff with the lower octave and then the higher octave. <laughs> eh, not quite though. Oh wait, sh the clean section centers around D, but the main riff centers around E. Uh, what if I just start on zero and then switch it to two halfway through? You think anyone will notice? <laughs> God bless these United States of the Digitech drop. And then rather than going back down to the zero, oh, 
Sorry, of course I meant... Cool. And throughout this process, I wasn't really talking too much about the neck. And that's because, honestly, besides the initial shock, it was just the occasional, oh, shit, that's right, this is kind of weird. And this is almost definitely because I'm just not used to it. It was mainly, like, these frets that's kind of awkward for me, I guess because I'm used to more shoulder. So I was starting to get a little bit of cramp. But other than that, and especially since it's got a super flat fingerboard radius, which I really don't like in general either, I was expecting to have a terrible time, but no. Nah. It riffs. So anyways, I think that's enough ideas. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on the demo track off camera. And I'll meet you back here for my final thoughts on the Strandberg Bowden Essential. But first, here's how the demo track, consisting of the first riffs inspired by this guitar, turned out. So, going into this, I was like, alright, this guitar is missing about 5 pounds, it looks like a puzzle piece, the neck is f***ing weird, there's a 50-50 chance I just hate it, and I'm not gonna struggle through a whole video trashing something just cause it's not for me. If I find it interesting though, well that's why you're watching this. I was not expecting to get to grips with this so quickly. Visually, the neck shape, well really the whole guitar, but especially the neck shape is so wild. I thought that was going to be a huge hurdle to jump over. You know, a big mental block, like a distraction that would detract from the playing experience or pull me out of the creative mindset. And it definitely did at the beginning, that shock factor but gradually less and less so. I definitely noticed it more when I looked down and saw what I was playing. <laughs> it was like, what the f that's so weird. I don't know, short-term memory loss or something because it was a surprise every time, but even the cramp issue I was facing writing the demo track went away as I got more used to the guitar. And it definitely helped that this is just a very well-built instrument. Since part of this model's role in the lineup is to be an ambassador for the brand to new Strandberg players, you love to see that. <laughs> Something I didn't really get over, and this is going to sound absolutely ridiculous because a lot of players will view this as a plus, but remember I come from the world of boat anchors, this is a very very light guitar. The website listed at about 2.15 kilograms or 4.7 freedom weight units, give or take. Objectively, there's a lot of benefits to a light guitar. It's more portable, especially given the size. It saves on future chiropractor bills. And now that I'm saying it out loud, it sounds extra ridiculous because out of everything, the body shape, the neck profile, the weight was the hardest adjustment. I'm just that used to guitars that are literally double the weight. I've also been informed that wearing a headless guitar at standard pop punk length is apparently a very serious punishable offense that'll get you sent straight to the gulag. So while I personally don't think I'll be making the full switch over to headless anytime soon, the Bowden Essential is a wonderfully executed case study on how to make a proper, high quality, and attainably priced gateway drug guitar. Impressive. 
That'll do it for me though. Here's where I'll throw it to you. What do you think of the Bowden Essential or about Scramber guitars overall? Have you tried one yet? Are you more inclined to try one now that there's a lower barrier to entry? Any and all thoughts, I'd love to know what you're thinking down below. Massive shout out to my amazing Patreon supporters. Their names are up on the screen right now. Consider joining them if you enjoy the content and want to directly support what I do and get bonus extras. You can also join as a channel member. Merch is available as well. Social media, Discord, and links to more details on all the gear used are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I will see you for the next video.